okay friends so today we are going to see design of c clamp or the offset link in this c clamp as the name suggests the link is a having a shape as a c or sometimes it is also called as a g g clamp or if you look at this so this is again used to carry the maximum time so tensile load or the tensile stresses are induced because at this particular point and at this particular point a tensile uh, load is being applied so uh, most of the time the clamping devices which are used these are the c, uh, c clamps these are called as the c clamps and if you look at if the load is applied at this uh, this point so this load is eccentric or this is the load is offset uh, to the main link and that's why it is many times called as an offset link okay so design of c clamp or offset link if you look at the diagram so you can see this is a sketch for the um, c clamp and here the main uh, link is over here and here we are considering that it is having a rectangular cross section not necessary that it should always have a rectangular cross section sometimes it may have a i section or sometimes it may be a having a, a circular section but here we are considering that it is having a rectangular cross section and the load w is applied at this point so this points where the load is applied is eccentric or is being offset by distance e from the main link or from the axis of the main link so now we will begin begin the design of this uh, c clamp link so let w is the load applied and the type of this load is nothing but tensile load load applied on the c clamp okay and e is offset distance between load point and axis of link okay and b is width of the link and T is thickness and here we are assuming sigma max or sigma t is a maximum permissible tensile stress okay so these are the assumptions we are making now if we uh, if we look at this link then this link may uh, there are the direct tensile forces or tensile stresses acted uh, imparted on this link and because of that we we have to first of all find out uh, the failure or we have to first of all check the failure of the link because of the direct tensile forces so first of all we will consider failure because of direct direct tensile stress now what is the load acted load applied is w and the cross sectional area so resisting cross sectional area is nothing but this is the resisting cross sectional area which we can say 
uh, width into thickness so I can write resisting area I will say a1 and this is equal to b into t okay so I can write it down like this 3b into t assuming b is equal to 3t okay so if the relation between the thickness and the width is not given you may assume it that width is equal to thrice the thickness otherwise many times in problem uh, this uh, relation between the thickness and the width may be uh, uh, may be given okay so assuming b is equal to 3t so i can say this is equal to 3t square and thus we know we know tensile stress is equal to load w divided by cross sectional area or the resisting area and that's why we can say sigma t is equal to w upon 3t square sigma t i call this as a equation 1 now secondly as we are seeing over here uh, this load is being eccentric this load is eccentric and because of this there may be a bending there may be a bending okay on this link so for that again we are going to find out the value in bending so secondly second value because of because of bending now value because of bending so for that what we have to find out First of all bending moment so we know bending moment m is equal to nothing but load multiplied by the distance so distance is nothing but eccentric that is the offset distance that is w into e so this is a bending moment and section modulus and section modulus is equal to that is z z equal to what is the section modulus yes the section modulus is t into b square divided by 6 so from this we can say t multiplied by 3 into t square divided by 6 so this turns out to be 9 t cube divided by 6 and we can say z is equal to 1.5 t cube okay so if we know the section modulus if we know the bending moment we can find out maximum bending moment sorry bending stress sigma b and this sigma b is equal to m by z that is bending moment divided by section modulus so m 
as we it is nothing but w into e divided by 1.5 t cube this is sigma b we will call this equation as equation 2 okay so now on the link there are two stresses develop one is because of the direct uh, tensile stresses and another is a bending stresses so so we can say the effective stresses or the maximum stresses or that is the maximum stresses on the link and this is given as we can say sigma max is equal to sigma t plus sigma b okay that is direct tensile stresses and the bending stresses so sigma max is equal to sigma t from equation 1 what is this sigma t w divided by 3t square w divided by 3t square plus sigma b this is w into e divided by 1.5 t cube okay so if you look at this equation sigma max is uh, must be given that is the permissible tensile stresses w that is the load e is the eccentric eccentricity so from this we can find out the unknown what is the unknown what is unknown over here that is t so we will get the cubic equation and this cubic equation after solving this cubic equation you can determine the value of t thickness so from this we can determine value of t that is thickness of the link so if we get the thickness we know the relation between the thickness and the width that is width is equal to 3t thrice t and that's why uh, we can find out the uh, value of uh, width also and in this way we completed uh, the design of the C clamp or the same procedure may be adopted for the offset link also.